show we hear included drugs, alcohol, and trashing hotel rooms, just to name a few things. He has written a great book. It is called Stairway to Heaven, and uh, this is really what went on inside Led Zeppelin. Welcome to the show. Thank you. This is a treat. I want you to know I'm a fan, so we're going to be doing some grilling here, okay? Oh, yeah, so yeah. Put, put on, it's Richard Cole, by the way. I want to say, make sure that I say you're right. doing everything. Put on a little Led Zeppelin music in the background here. Get in the mood here. I got to ask you, first of all, what does a tour manager do? What does it do? Pretty much everything. You know, uh, the, the, the roles change slightly today because they use more people. But basically what I used to do is um, I set up the hotels, the transportation, um, pay for the hotels, do the box office receipts, um, organize their road crew or liaise with them, mm -hmm. um, and also anything else the band might have wanted. You know, organize the security. Keep it, you just have to keep an eye on everything to make sure it runs smoothly from city to city. Now, this, this city to city business that you guys did for years. Now, parents were terrified when you guys would hit town. I mean, we were hearing stories of drugs, alcohol, satanic worship, black magic, all that. You were there. Finally, we're going to find out. Was it all true? Some of it, not all of it. I mean, I don't know what they were terrified about. We, we never used to get to a city, in most cases, before 7.30 at night. And we'd leave straight after the concert and go back to whichever base we were using. So maybe it was the people in the base cities that were a little bit worried. Well, that might be different. <laughs> that could have been oh, different. You plead guilty to that one, right? <laughs> what would you say was the wildest experience that you you had on on the road with led zeppelin and i know judging from the book that there's quite a few to choose from what would you say was the wildest well there's so many but which may seem wild to other people they were just a little entertainment as we were traveling <laughs> through the road <laughs> traveling along you know day by day it's um you know whatever we could do to make life easier for ourselves what was there there was something involving now i'm going to be delicate here we are cable but you know it's still a family network here. There was something involving um a four octopus and a bathtub correct oh, yes yes what exactly was that and, and where was that and is as the statute of limitations run out oh i don't think we, we never have to worry about the statute of limitations there um <laughs> that was a uh, i was we were doing a show at the rose palace out in Pasadena, and it was Bonzo's birthday. John um, Bonham. John Bonham, and we were drummer. doing two shows. And uh, Barry Imhoff, who was with Bill Graham, the promoter, um, put on a little entertainment for us. You know, and he took us back to a hotel, and uh, he had all this... Uh, hotel was decorated with uh, all fruits and vegetables, and in the bathtub he had a few octopuses, and out came these lovely girls. And... Um, they took a bath with the octopus. They were quite happy in there. <laughs> okay. And there was also a story. Just flow with this, okay? Picture this, if you will. And then there was, there was this famous place that, that a lot of rockers love to go to, and you folks made it famous in Led Zeppelin, the Edgewater Inn in Seattle. Oh, a wonderful place. That and, was. Now, there was something involving, uh, well, you used to be able to fish right off there. As a matter of fact, I think we have a picture of uh, John Bonham. Um, a picture of him fishing off of, right outside of the hotel room. Oh, yeah. But there was something involving a girl and a fish. That, there, there he is there. A, that's girl, fish and, oh, yeah. a girl and a fish, a very famous story. Is there any way to tell that on television? Not really. <laughs> Not really. It's, um, it's a real fishy story, that one. That's one you have to read. It's, it was a what kind of fish? A, really, a red snapper. A red snapper. Yeah. So that's in the book, right? That's in the book, that one. Maybe we just will leave that to your imagination. I think people will pretty well get a hint that, that you guys were involved in a lot of seafood, basically, on the road. Oh, we like that. It's good some, for the some... complexion. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What was a typical day like, or did you have a typical day for no. you? Because what you did and what, the, and what the other guys did was totally different. Like, you were responsible for getting up early in the morning, right? Right. Or, or not going to bed at all. I was usually up when everyone else was getting up. You know, I often, I often didn't used to sleep that much. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a really hard to work out a typical day because our day didn't start in the daytime. Uh, I would get up uh, whenever I got up, you know, which usually was like sort of lunchtime. But if we were working out of a fixed city, then, you know, I'd have to get them up about four or five, depending on how long the, the uh, flight was to the next city, um, and just organize them. I mean, they were, they were great. I mean, there was no problem. They were always on time downstairs. We'd just get in the cars, go off to, um, 
to the airport, say if we were in Chicago, when we arrived at whatever city we were arriving in, one of our security guys would meet us with um, a couple of police cars and uh, motorcycle escorts. Mm -hmm. So we had the siren. So, you know, we could work our time out uh, pretty much to the exact moment when we were going to arrive because, you know, we knew the distance and how long it was going to take us. And we knew there'd be no traffic because it would be moved out of the way for us. And there's and actually, if you want to check out exactly what that was like, there's a great scene, if I'm not mistaken, the very opening of... Um, of uh, the, uh, the song Remains the Same. I was doing the same thing. I was going to start to heaven. Song Remains the Same, the Led Zeppelin movie. And it, yeah. you're inside the motorcade as they're going through. It's kind of fun. It's sort of like being in your own motorcade there. How did you guys... Now, there were some moments, I'm sure, when the police were called. Various things. You're tossing TV sets out of uh, hotel rooms and things. How did you, because it was your responsibility, mm. chill out the police and not get these guys in jail? Did you have to take the heat for a lot of it? Not really, because um, we employed the police. Uh, <laughs> that, that would do it. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we used off-duty policemen, so they were there all the time. And when the manager called for the police, one of our guys would go and speak to him. <laughs> so they were on the spot, always ready. <laughs> sort of like he came down from the room and he said, you have down. a problem? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much like that. You know, Put your car towed away? <laughs> or be in a restaurant and the guy, you know, we'd be playing around the restaurant and the guy said, I'm going to call the police and someone would jump up and show them a badge and say, don't worry, we'll take care of it. <laughs> It'll be all right. We'll have more mashed potatoes, please. Well, we're going to continue with Richard Cole, who's got the book Stairway to Heaven. We're going to be finding out what's the, oh, it's Led Zeppelin Uncensored. And we're going to find out about the uncensored Led Zeppelin when we come back. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Inside Word. I'm Michael Kastner, and we are chatting with Richard Cole, who has written this great book called Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin Uncensored. For uh, 12 years, give or take a day or two, you were the, uh, the tour manager for Led Zeppelin. Now, one of the hotels that was very, very famous, and I drive past it almost every day, is on Sunset. It is now called the, uh, the I think, just the Hyatt Hotel but it was known as the Continental Hyatt House, but you guys basically got it the nickname of the right. Riot House. It was, it was actually, the first time I came here, it was Gene Autry's Continental Hotel. <laughs> oh, I bet he was happy to see you guys coming, huh? <laughs> You're not exactly cowboy music, you know? Yeah, yeah. Nudie used to move his car when we came into town, that's for sure. The, uh, the, the cowboy designer or whatever. Yeah, he, yeah. Was, he always used to be there. What happened? On, you guys would take over the entire top floor? Ninth floor. The ninth floor? Usually the ninth floor. And what happened there? What went on in that hotel? What were some of the antics? Oh, anything your little heart desires. You know, I used to have a motorcycle because I, it was easier um, to get from one end of the corridor to the other. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all sorts of things up there, you know. You yeah. would ride a motorcycle up and yeah. down the hallways. And then down the elevator to go out shopping. But, uh, <laughs> they got fed up with that after a couple of days. Uh, I think the hotel stole the motorcycle. <laughs> It's probably you know. still out in the uh, in the back there at the hotel. Uh, good job in the red revolving doors. Otherwise, you would have been in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Television sets, people having to dodge them down in the... Uh, in no, the no, they didn't. Floor? No, they, they were thrown out. Other parts, you know, where there was no one walking around. It just <laughs> well, out of a bit of frustration. Now, what what would you be frustrated about on the road? What stress would, would the band and, and you be under? The wrong color socks. It could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's lots of little things upset you. <laughs> you would dismantle plumbing did you guys do things like that no we were never into the dismantling of plumbing funny enough no that wasn't that, that wasn't one of our things that's pretty sick don't you think i mean yeah. people who are into dismantling plumbing, it's a lot of hard that's work too much it's a lot of work and thought has to go what we used to like doing in different hotels was to take the doors off and swap them around with other doors so that people didn't know which room they were they'd have, <laughs> they'd have the key to the wrong door number and things like that that was usually amusing to watch. And they let you stay there time and time again. Oh, they loved us. Yeah, they used to redecorate the floor every time we left. Well, they would have to, after the motorcycle marks on the walls, probably, right? And people used to ring up to find out when we were there because they wanted to stay in the hotel at the same time because they loved being amused day in and day, you know, through the day and through the night. <laughs> I should think they need a rest afterwards. I was going to say, then they checked into, like, the Mondrian to get some sleep or something like that. Yeah, somewhere... <laughs> Now, what Peaceful. about these stories about black magic and voodoo and all of that stuff that particularly Jimmy Page was, was involved in? Is, is that true? Well, I've never seen it. I mean, I used to go with him to buy his Alistair Crowley books, and he, he had a home up in uh, on Loch Ness where um, the Alistair Crowley had owned at one time. But I'd never seen him sort of running around with a cape on or a wand or 
There was no bats bubbling in a cauldron in his room or anything like that. I mean, you never seen anything like that. I mean, not even rarely even see any candles or anything in the room. So, I think a lot of it is hearsay. You know, he wasn't dabbling in it or, or anything else because he did kind of have that image. Like in the in the film, um, song remains the same. He did kind of try and show that that image. You think it was all just showbiz? It could have been. You know, a lot of people have images that they're nothing like them. You know, they <laughs> go home and they're just quite normal. Would I wouldn't you... say he was that normal, but, you know, <laughs> he used to go home <laughs> occasionally. Only did that, that seafood fetish, but we're not going to get into that anymore. How would you describe these guys? Were they, were they like we, we think they, they are, or would you say that they are a lot more normal? Would you say, how, how would you describe Robert Plant, the lead singer, for instance? They're all, they're all normal when they're at home. I mean, when you go out on the road, you, um, I suppose your personality changes. You know, there's more things to more things to do. You know that you you wouldn't do at home. I mean, you know, you wouldn't sit at home really and throw the television through the window, would you? No, because that's your TV. Right. You know. Um, so you know, at home, I shouldn't think they got up to too much uh, mischief. But on the road, you know, it's as I say, you just get bored, and you know, other people come along and kind of dare you to do things. There's all sorts of things going on all the time. But uh, I think you just fall into that pattern for a while, and then after a while, you don't even bother. I know. I I just I gave up throwing TV sets out. Yeah. It just you know, it's it's old after a while. The cords get caught. And it, it's you have to find something else. Now now there's cable, so that's a hassle. And it gets stuck. Yeah. It only go halfway down. Exactly. There's two it's cables no pulling. It's no fun. And the no box. implosion. Nothing. No. <laughs> <laughs> Solid state. I hate that stuff. Now what was this thing? The band had a unique relationship with Elvis. What was that? Tell us about that. Well, Elvis was um, was one of their heroes. I think he was pretty much everyone from my generation. Um, in the, Elvis was the hero, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, we went to see him quite a lot of times. That must have been an unusual sight. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> he was very similar in his own way. Well, I want to ask about those meetings when we come back to the inside words so don't go away. Welcome back to The Inside Word. I'm Michael Kastner, and we are visiting with the author of this great new book. It's called Stairway to Heaven, Led Zeppelin Uncensored. We're talking about Richard Cole. You've been hearing about, you've been hearing Led Zeppelin for years now. We finally find out what was going on behind the scenes. So when we last, when we last left you, uh, we were talking about Led Zeppelin meeting Elvis. What was it like? Did they, were they really in awe of Elvis? Yeah, we'd seen him in Vegas, um, and then we'd seen him in Madison Square Gardens, but we'd never actually got to meet him. Mm-hmm. And then when he played the forum, uh, Tom Hewlett, who was our promoter as well as Elvis's, um, arranged for it. So the Elvis used to stay in the hotel across the street from the forum, and I think there's a tunnel under the forum that goes to the hotel. So after his performance, he brought us over to the suite to meet him. What was the meeting like? It was great, terrific. He was uh, really nice, very hospitable. You know, He signed autographs for all of us. Uh, done a little sing-song with Robert. Um, he spoke to Bonham mainly, uh, strangely enough, because uh, they both had the same they both had the same um, interest, which was Fast Cars and Peter Sellers movies. <laughs> and I mean, he got on Bonds. I got on great with him. I had no idea that Elvis was into Peter Sellers movies. Mm. Oh, yeah. Who knew? Did he like give him jewelry and scarves and things like that? Oh no, that was a different time when uh, John Paul Jones and I went up to his Bel Air home, and I was. Actually, I, I shouted him about something because it was so boring. Um, I asked him, I said, it's so boring. Yeah, and I swore at him and he jumped up and went to do this karate thing with me. And as I jumped up to block it, my wristwatch came off. And he picked it up and he said, oh, you've got big wrists. I said, yeah. He said, well, a lovely watch. I said, I'll oh, keep it. And that was it. It was all off from there. He <laughs> ran in and he just got his dressing gown and pajamas he was wearing. He ran in, came back with this beautiful uh, gold watch with uh, diamonds and onyx and gave me that and then he looked at the ring and he wanted my ring so I gave him the ring and he came up with one a ring that uh, still had love Linda on it when I got it I had to have it rubbed off and give it to my wife you know <laughs> but, uh, it was shaped like a cowboy hat with a, a one and a half carat diamond and two small diamonds and he looked at John Paul Jones and he said well what have you got and he took Jones's watch off him and he gave him a watch and then when we left he uh, his bodyguards went to get up to leave you know to go around him and he said I don't need you guys I'm safe with these two here and we went out to the car and he opened the car doors and I mean the chauffeur couldn't believe it because he's there in his dressing gown and the slippers with little pom-poms on them and, <laughs> and he says see you again guys and unfortunately that was in 1975 and it was uh, the last time we ever seen him 
you obviously kept all of the jewelry and everything together. Right? Oh, that went got lost. You're kidding? No. Oh no. That well, went... I gave the ring to my wife, and I think that was stolen from one of their homes at the time. And then the watch went missing when my house got flooded. So. Well, at least you had it at one point. You yeah. met Elvis. What yeah, that's say? that's a nice thing. I still got a scarf, I think, somewhere. Out there. <laughs> a little and sweaty scarf. Yeah, it was the love Elvis on it or whatever. And I, wanna... I still got the autograph. Oh, that's not too bad. Well, I want to also ask you, if you think the band is ever going to get back together, is there any chance? I know, you know, when John Bonham died, the drummer, he died in what year? It was like 70? 80. It was in 80? Okay. I think September 80. They played once at Live Aid, is that right? And then they did that reunion thing at um, Atlantic Records in 1988. Right. Do you think they're going to ever do anything together again? It's really hard to know. I can't see it, but then you, who knows? I mean, I know Robert's making an album at the moment, so mm -hmm. you know that by the time he makes the album and then tours, that's another two years. I really can't see anything happening for before that comes around again when someone's free to do something. We can still keep our fingers crossed, right? There's no, yeah. it's not ruled out yet. Make sure you don't get cramped though, holding them too long. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're wearing Elvis's ring out there. Return it to this guy. Now, what you're doing besides writing this book is you're working oh, with a band called Switch, right? Yes, yeah, so they're gorgeous. They're four gorgeous young girls, and um, we're going to put them in a studio near the end of September. We're just doing the photographs and the promotion for them now. Do they know about you and that red snapper? Oh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they haven't read the book. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they can run fast enough. I don't think I can run fast enough to chase them these days. So I don't think they're really worried. <laughs> I will say that you don't look like we would expect the the tour manager of of Led Zeppelin to be. You're very very businesslike and everything. Well, I guess that's you really needed that kind of that that image to to chill out all the hotel managers throughout the years, right? Not really, because when you're on the road, it's like difficult to keep uh, to be well not well dressed. I mean, you can well be well dressed, but you know, you're always traveling all the time. I used to wear mainly jeans and. T-shirts most of the time. And carried lots of cash. Yeah, that's, that's what the managers are impressed with. You know, <laughs> they, don't, they don't worry about the suit if you've got no cash in the pockets. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure Thank meeting you. Thank you very much. And Mark. you've got to check great. this book out. If you've, if you've ever heard a Led Zeppelin song, you really wanted to know what was really going on. This tells you everything from a guy who was on the inside, Richard Cole. The book is called Stairway to Heaven. Well, when we come back, we're going to be talking about some other musical acts, including the Eurythmics. I can't even talk today. Are they gone for good? We're going to find out. Don't go away.